All right, hello and welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Cody, the founder of Montarbo Skincare, always here to help you have the most healthy, glowing, and gorgeous skin. And in today's video, this is for professionals or anybody who might want to enjoy uh, just watching me do a peel on my cousin. My cousin is definitely advanced. She uses all my products. She's been using them for a long time. So I'm using a lot of advanced techniques on her. We do a process called the Montarbo Method, which is a six layer of care done in the proper sequence during a treatment so that we can keep the skin safe and help our clients to achieve the most dramatic results, but very quickly so that there's not much downtime. So here I'm applying my new Gentle Glow Cream Cleanser on dry skin and then I'm just massaging it in. And uh, what's great about this product, it's very hydrating, very gentle, able to use you know, on most skin types, all skin types. And so I kind of just spend some time massaging and using some pressure point around the um, eye area just to really work this product in so that I can make sure that it's the skin is being hydrated, it's gently being exfoliated, but I'm not using anything that's very stripping. Now I'm slowly adding water. So uh, what's cool about this cleanser is um, you just, it's very concentrated. So it's, it's made for professionals kind of. So what's uh, unique is that it doesn't need a lot of water to work. So I just slowly start to add water in and then massage my cousin in the temples and the cheeks and using a little bit of pressure point massage. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more water to really get some sudsing action so that I can really do a deep cleanse. But I probably spend quite some time, you know, doing this. The cleanse is the most important part uh, with, you know, as a professional, but also just as a normal skincare routine. If the cleanse isn't done right, it, it really, it, you know, if it's, let me just say, if, if the cleanse is done properly and you spend enough time cleansing, you set your skin up for success by um, just having it very clean and allowing whatever products you put on afterwards to be able to work better. A lot of people could really, I think, get better results with just spending a little more time cleaning their skin and really working it in and getting in the hairline, all the dirt debris by the ears, the chin, underneath the jaw, and also the neck. As you can see, my cousin is having a wonderful time with me, so we are laughing. I had to cut out the audio because her and I together are just a hot mess. So, um, But I just love working on her. She's such a wonderful human being, and she just trusts me, and I get to practice a lot of cool stuff on her. So now I'm just continuing to work that product in, girl. You know, it's just the more time you spend loving on the skin, working that product into the skin with the cleanse, uh, the better everything else will work because I'm just making sure that it's thoroughly done and I'm just going to use um, a little bit more water and just continue to work it in I think a lot of people don't spend enough time really cleansing um, even as professionals even though we do often uh, provide or recommend like doing a double cleanse if you go to a professional it's always about you know a double cleanse so it does make a difference for the um, product absorption and also just how, like if you don't do a good cleanse, then what happens usually too is um, you'll end up using a lot more of the following product. Also, if the cleanse isn't done perfectly, the leftover oil or anything left on the skin like debris or makeup can neutralize the next products. All right, now I'm going in with my advanced exfoliating cleanser, leaving on the Gentle Glow Cleanser, which is going to exfoliate now and take the cleansing to the next level, helping to brighten any pigmentation. To think about uh, exfoliating before you do a peel, you know, my philosophy is you want to slowly exfoliate, uh, going stronger with higher percentages through the treatment instead of doing too high of a percentage right away. So this cleanser has a 12% alpha hydroxy in it. So I'm like slowly adding in the alpha hydroxy with each product, doing a different layer, taking off a different layer of skin, just keeping the skin safe so I can also watch it to see if it's going to be overly reactive, which you never kind of know with a new client or somebody you can always run into the skin giving you a little surprise. So that's why I kind of slowly, slowly exfoliate until I reach my desired kind of outcome before I put on the main peel solution. So I'm just working that cleanser in. I used about two pumps, working it in, working it in. The more, more time I spend working the product in, the more exfoliation and stimulation will occur, which also allows me to not use um, 
uh, very high percentages of the following ingredients after this part of the treatment. I also get right underneath the eye to help with any pigmentation discoloration. Most have a little thin film layer of like pigment under their eyes and on their eyelids because also the eyelids um, get stained with like just makeup over the years or not wearing sunscreen and just rubbing your eyes or them never really getting protected or glasses kind of amplifying some of the UV light so they get really dark. Uh, so making sure I exfoliate very gently and quickly under the eye so I treat the whole face because it's all skin. If you have not learned these techniques yet, don't uh, avoid the eye area at first. This is more of an advanced technique for, for estheticians. I'll also leave some info and some links below if you're a professional and you want to work with me or find out more information, I'll leave that in the description area. You can always ask your questions below as well. Alright, I spent about five minutes cleaning the skin. Now I'm taking off the cleanser, starting with the eye area first, just in case there's any tingling. Always eye areas first to uh, be cautious, obviously, in that area. I'm just taking it off with cold or coolish 4x4s instead of hot. Hot water during a peel uh, is best to avoid just because it dries out the skin, it dehydrates it, it's irritating, and the hot cold, hot cold on a client during a peel is awful, uh, the sensation is. So it's best to do more cool and cold when you're using more, you know, acids and stuff. It's, it's, it's more refreshing to the client. All right, now I'm going in with my very popular salicylic acid. This has some alcohol in there, so it'll degrease and defat the skin. It also has salicylic acid, which acts as a vehicle, allowing me to just kind of, it's like, it's a vehicle, so it, it kind of allows any ingredient I apply afterwards, which is going to be lactic acid, to piggyback deeper into the follicle, because salicylic is oil-loving and oil-dissolving, so when it sees oil, it dissolves in it. Um, it also has azelaic acid and vitamin B, so it helps with redness and um, like inflammation and stuff. So it's just a great prep for the skin. We always use this up to probably six times during a treatment just to take off another layer of skin, make sure all oil and dirt and makeup is off of the skin so that the main acid solution also doesn't dissolve and that we get even, uh, even penetration. It's really all about the prep. The better the prep, the better the outcome. Now I'm going in with my advanced lactic brightening treatment, which is a 10% lactic and a 2% glycolic. What this does, I always do this um, before I ever do the main kind of treatment because this is a way to test my clients to see how sensitive they are. Lactic is also very hydrating to the skin. It's just another layer of exfoliation. So we're kind of going in, you know, with 12% from the exfoliating cleanser, 2% from the salicylic acid treatment, and now we're going in with uh, another 12% formula. So we're just slowly exfoliating at a time so that we're keeping the skin safe. We're also watching it for urethema, a lot of redness. This hydration that will occur from the lactic acid will also just be more friendly with the main solution I'm going to go in with, which is also, I think, going to be a 15%, but we're going to see. Alpha hydroxy acid needs to be neutralized in anything over a 12%, but I keep slowly adding it in, working it in, so that I get an even absorption. So I keep layering, layering, layering more and more in so that I get a slower absorption, but a more even absorption. Um, so I'm trying to wait for that redness to pop up and be more even all over the skin, which is the urethema. Right now it's about a level three on her chin and I'm trying to get it to maybe a four or five all over. It just depends. Uh, it is a little difficult because her skin is darker, um, but I do see the redness popping up. And that's really um, what that tells us is that 
It tells us how deep we are in the skin. I'm just applying a little bit of that lactic to the eyelid and I'll rinse it off really quickly. This is an advanced tip, of course. Okay, so I removed everything with cold uh, 4x4s and now I'm going in with a hydrating mask. Hydrated skin is happy skin. It also absorbs the acids better. They penetrate more evenly. If the skin is very dehydrated, especially with glycolic acid, oh my goodness, you can run into so many issues including burns and stuff. So the skin cell prefers a hydration to be hydrated and will um, also allow the client to not feel so much um, activity on the skin when it's hydrated. So I always take off the lactic, hydrate the skin, then usually use also like a thicker moisture mask after this, which I'm gonna do in a second. That way the skin is just very hydrated and happy and healthy before I go in with the 15% uh, glycolic that I'm gonna use next. Just gently massaging that hydrating mask, which is from Aveda. You can get it from Aveda. It's probably my most favorite. It's a little liquidy, but it really does the trick. I always apply hydrating mask first, then moisture mask second. So water first, moisture second. Applying a very thick moisture mask. It's not my favorite. It has a fragrance in it. And I try to avoid fragrance during a peel because the fragrance can irritate the skin or cause an allergic reaction. So I try to avoid fragrant based products during my treatments as much as possible or have minimal amount of fragrance in them, even though I know they smell yummy, but they can run into, you can run into a lot of issues with fragrant products. I'm just slowly massaging this in. So we added water, now moisture. So we're just loving on that skin. I'm also just paying attention. How red is the skin? Is it looking sensitive? How is my client doing? Is she feeling, you know, pain or itchiness? So it's just a way to kind of calm the skin down, love on the skin before we go in with the main peeling solution. All right, now I'm removing with coolish water and just being very gentle with the skin, making sure I take everything off. And then I'm going to go in with my salicylic acid treatment one more time to strip the skin of any kind of leftover oil or debris from the mask. Just making sure that um, we get even absorption with the 15% glycolic, which I'm gonna put on next. Now you can see I'm more dabbing the solution in as I progress through the treatment so that I'm not rubbing because at this point she's already been exfoliated so a lot of rubbing on the skin will just irritate the skin and the client. Right now I'm going in with my 15% glycolic, which is just a pure glycolic with a very low pH. I've already prepped this skin beautifully, so I don't need to use too much of this. And she's probably going to get a pretty, you know, quick response because of all that I've done. But you could see her skin is just perfectly prepped and ready. So now when I put on this solution after everything else I've done, I can keep the skin safe because I'm using only a 15%. And if any reaction occurs, I'll know right away instead of going in with a very, very strong or high percentage. So again, I'm just slowly, exfol I'm slowly layering each exfoliant and going stronger uh, through the process of the peel so that I can always control the acid and keep an eye out for my client, making sure that they are safe and that the skin is not having too much of a reaction. Using a very large brush, I can leave the link below. I get these on Amazon. It's actually a paint brush, but I love them because they're acrylic and they're very durable compared to some of my aesthetic brushes. But I'm using a larger brush so I can just map more of the face surface of the skin quickly. Um, sometimes I use a smaller one. It just depends on the client and what I'm doing. 
So again, with glycolic, it's there's a few things to always know about, which I'm sure you know as a professional already. But you know what makes um, glycolic unpredictable is that it's obviously not self-neutralizing. So anything over a 12, this is a 15, needs to be neutralized with water or sodium bicarbonate to turn off the acid, or it'll continue to penetrate into the skin. Also, how much you layer onto the skin causes more absorption. How long you leave it on the skin also. So it's usually about seven minutes max for any acid, regardless of the percentage. I continue to add more and more so it's just even absorption so that all of the whole face is being treated evenly so that she'll get an even urethema which is the redness all over instead of only in certain areas so I just keep layering keep layering keep putting if at any time I feel that she's having a reaction I would just neutralize right away with some water some sodium bicarbonate and then calm down the skin with some ice cubes I also added just a dash to the neck area at the very end of all of this so that I take it off first. I'm going in quickly with a 35% glycolic because her skin is tough and because her skin is not reacting the way that I need it to before I layer on the next solution. and I'm just putting this on very quickly. She's not getting the urethema I want. The urethema scale, which is something we talk about in advanced training when I'm working with people, is really important because it lets you know where you are in the skin, like the depth of the skin. And as an esthetician, we can only reach the basal layer, but a lot of magic happens in that layer of skin. So the, the density of the redness shows us how how deep the acid is penetrating in the skin. So I want a little bit urethema because I'm trying to exfoliate and treat the skin as much as possible so that when I go in with my TCA acid, I can use the lowest, um, the lowest percentage and use the least amount of layers. I'm just continuing to spot treat now to get an even urethema so that it's evenly red all over so the cheek area is taking a little bit longer typically in the center of the face it's more sensitive obviously um, so I am being mindful of that I am going into the um, uh, wrinkle it smile line area a little bit more because she just wants to work on that area and then I'm neutralizing quickly with some water. Turning off the acid in certain areas that are sensitive or that you don't want it to penetrate any deeper is really important to know when you're perfecting peels because you want to do certain tips and tricks like, you know, um, help with the wrinkles and improvement but you don't want to cause irritation so you can spot treat then neutralize real quick so you still get a result but you do it safely now i'm just continuing to rub the solution on the skin and then neutralizing and taking off the acid with a cold uh, four by four all right now i'm actually adding a pumpkin solution which is a 30 percent glycolic so it's similar to the one i used in the percentage of glycolic but this has also some enzymes in here a little bit of salicylic so it's not causing too much more exfoliation from the 35 i just did because it's a lower percentage but it will give me just a dash more exfoliation in the areas i don't feel are even quite yet i'm still not feeling that feeling which you know as an esthetician it's a lot about intuition so um, I just feel like she needs a little bit more because she's hardcore and she's using all my products and we've done pretty deep peels on her before so I have to give her a treatment that she's going to love so now the enzymes in this pumpkin solution will help to exfoliate but in a more gentle way and just kind of treat the skin exfoliating just a dash more so that I get an even urethema and exfoliation and feel ready for the main TCA solution. I'm also rubbing it in. It allows deeper penetration, further absorption. Um, if you just brush this on, leave it on, and then take it off, it's not going to be a really good peel or 
it just it has to be worked into the skin a little bit most solutions really do um, so you have to put it on take it off really quickly which i'm doing right now so that was probably only about a minute i left it on a lot of magic can happen in just one minute and you can see my cousin she's definitely having a moment of struggle here um, because that's quite a lot to be doing to the skin again these are advanced tips but we are always obviously keeping the client safe asking how they're doing counting zero to ten a fan cold water cooling them down and yeah here i'm using ice cold four by four so they're dipped in water that has ice cubes in them to calm her down and to love on her a little bit which she is loving right now Going back in with my salicylic after the pumpkin just to make sure there's no oil or anything left on the skin I'm just being very gentle pressing the solution into the skin more than anything and now this is another layer of salicylic so when we do apply the main solution it is going to go right in really quickly so you gotta watch it and be very careful all right, now I'm choosing to use um, our Jesner solution, which is a 14% salicylic with lactic and resorcinol. Um, I'm choosing to use this formula just because I am wanting her to peel really well and I'm going to layer in one pass so that she gets a pseudo frost which is the precipitation that occurs mostly from the salicylic acid which is that white kind of powder look it's not a true frost a real frost is from TCA acid so we put that on I'm wiping it off on the chin right away because I notice right away she's pretty treated on the chin so I'm going to layer this more in other areas that are little bit more difficult to peel like the forehead and the cheek area these are areas that are a little more uh, difficult to peel in the sense because it depends on how many oil follicles are around that surface area as well that also depends on how much um, the acid will absorb as well now I'm removing with a cold 4x4 four four. I just put it on real quick I just wanted a dash more absorption of acid so that I get a really quick frost from the TCA using a low percentage. All right now I'm going in with the main peel solution which is a 10% uh, by itself with water and my cotton which is a 2x2 two two, is barely damp so it's just the essence of the solution that's on there and I'm just I'm right away treating the areas that I that are the most gentle like the eyelid and the nose area now I'm going to use the frosting which is the self neutralization is the coagulation of protein in the skin which is what we call frosting and it is a way for us to know the depth that we are in the skin which is obviously something that takes a long time which I you know train people to figure out but we use the frosting which is the white that is occurring on the skin you can see on our forehead as a way to know where to add more solution or not like in the center of her forehead she's pretty frosted so I'm not going to apply too much more there but I want that frost to be even all over her whole face like a glazed donut when we're doing specific techniques for anti-aging or scarring we do all kinds of other stuff as you can see my cousin is feeling this solution a lot based on everything else we did sometimes I'll just use a cold 4x4 just to calm them down with the heat but the acid will not turn off TCA is scary because it doesn't turn off so uh, no water or but sodium bicarbonate will turn off the acid she still penetrates into the skin there's also something called the uh, a delayed effect um, where you have to wait several minutes for the TCA to comp, uh, to start to neutralize so that delayed effect can cause a lot of issues because people just keep layering the acid on and they don't realize that it's still penetrating from the last layer so now I'm just continuing to add dashes of that TCA to cause an even glazed look on my cousin's skin with that white precipitation or the white uh, frosting
So this is the way I did this peel. Every peel is unique and customized, but I just wanted to show you guys a little bit behind the scenes, some techniques. Hopefully this helped ask your questions below. I am going to show you her process after this video. You're going to see how her skin peeled so you can see kind of the process of her peel. Um, there's a couple things I did behind the scenes after this last layer that are advanced advanced tips that I'm not going to show you like spot treatment and all kinds of other stuff. So. Um, she's going to probably start peeling in three days. Peel for a good three days is going to get really brown and she's just going to keep it gentle. I hope you guys found this video really helpful. It was an honor for me to put this together. If you want more videos like this, please just let me know. I would love to be able to help um, any estheticians out there. And if you are an esthetician and want to work with me, uh, look in the description area and I'll leave a link and you can always reach out at Cody at MontarboSkinCare.com if you want to email me. Have a beautiful day. Thank you for your time and I'll see you soon in a new video. Bye. So real quick, this is immediately after her peel, about maybe four hours is at our house. I'm just showing you the urethema, the redness, that's all good. And already the brown is starting to pop up a little bit. Some areas of pigmentation will pop up, but the brown is also just kind of the controlled burn from the TCA solution. A lot of that also has to do with the um, the Jesner solution I used before, so it makes the peel a little bit more brown as well. And this is two days after the peel. It's starting to get brown and peel on the chin area. I'm just telling her to use some Aveeno and some Aquaphor and minimal amounts of hydrocortisone if needed, but ice cubes to help calm, like calm down any itchiness.